Welcome back friends. In the last video, we have seen how to implement centralized exception handling. If you watch this video, definitely you cannot understand what is the concept of handling centralized exception handling. Please watch my previous video I have given in the video description. Okay. Now we are going to see uh, two examples now here. One is uh, validation exception. When you look at the exception package, I have created uh, several um, custom exception, duplicate key found exception, invalid input exception, then invalid username password exception, then resource not found exception, then validation exception. Now we are going to see the example of resource not found exception and a validation exception. The validation exception I have used for to validate mandatory fields while creating a user. Okay, the same validation exception I am going to use all the scenarios in our billing system. The registration service in the, in the registration service uh, we have one method called do registration. This is the method um, uh, creating a um, different type of uh, um, users. It could be a customer, employee or vendor. Before creating um, the particular user, I want to validate the required attributes are uh, properly inputted. That validation happening uh, in the controller side. Let me, let me open the controller class. Where is the controller class? Yeah, here. So this is creating an employee, this is creating customer, this is creating a vendor. In this each method, you can see I am calling do registration. I am calling do registration. Before calling this method, I am calling one more method called validate. Validate, right? User validator dot validate. I am passing whatever request object available here. This request object populated by client side. Uh, as of now, we are using Postman as a client side. Whatever value you have to inside a Postman client, that value coming here as a request body, that request body in the form of vendor DTO, in the form of customer DTO, in the form of employee DTO, based on the flow. Uh, let's say uh, when creating an employee, uh, from the client side, we are passing employee DTO as a request body. The employee DTO object is passing inside a validate method. Inside a validate method, I am checking the employee DTO attributes, all, all attributes entered properly or not. First, I am calling validate user. Validate user is a specific to user field. Instead of employee DTO, we have a user DTO. I am taking that user DTO object. I am validating that user DTO object using validate user private method. Instead of validate user, I am checking all mandatory attributes are available or not. If Mandatory, uh, mandatory attribute is missing. If mandatory attribute is missing, I am adding one error message inside a list object. Validation message dot add mobile number cannot empty. If mobile is empty, mobile number is empty, I am adding uh, inside a array list validation message dot add mobile number cannot be empty. Like that, I am adding uh, each validation message inside an array list. If any fails, empty this validate user return array list inside array list those messages stored then i am validating employee specific attribute in our case employee specific attribute is a full name if full name is empty i am adding error message inside a validation message array list now finally all validation message stored inside a validation messages array list okay then after doing all the validation finally i am checking if validation message is not empty, if validation message is not empty, meaning some validation is happened, that respective error message available here. So I am throwing invalid input exception. So I am throwing invalid input exception. If validation message is not empty, that meaning some error is exist inside a validation message. So I am throwing invalid input exception by passing validation message array list inside the constructor, inside this constructor. 
Now, whenever throw this exception, our Spring Framework call this message. Sorry, this method. This method. In our Spring Boot application, wherever throwing this particular invalid input exception, our Spring Boot Framework call this method. How Spring Boot know that? Need to call this method while throwing invalid input exception. The reason is because of this annotation. In the method level, I am defining this annotation at exception handler. This exception handler annotation um, having one parameter called invalid input exception. Because of this annotation, Spring Boot knows, uh, knows that whenever throwing invalid input exception, need to call this method. Need to call this method. Again, I am saying while calling invalid input exception, Spring Boot Framework come to this class and check if any method annotated with at exception handler, if that annotation having a parameter invalid input exception, that respective method invoked by our Spring Boot Framework. So, this method is a common method for invalid input exception wherever in our building system throwing invalid input exception those places this method get invoked okay now we're going to see the demo i'm going to start the server in debug mode the line number 52 i'm throwing invalid input exception i'm setting debug mode here then the building exception handler invalid input exception here i am setting debug mode okay i am opening the postman okay here i am going to make some field empty full name then first name password okay when I send a request, since we are setting debug point, adding debug point, it will come to here. Then it will go here. Let's see that now. The, see the control is coming here. Here I am throwing invalid input exception. After throwing this exception, automatically this method getting called. Here I am setting debug point. So I resume in the debug point from here. When I click this, it will go out from here. Now it's coming to invalid input exception. This method called by Spring Boot because I am throwing here invalid input exception. After throwing this, automatically Spring Boot calling this method, taking the exception object from this exception object, taking the error list. I am throwing that error list as a response object using response entity. When I click the resume program. You can get that error here. You can see the error here. I'm resuming here. See here, first name cannot be empty, full name cannot be empty. First name cannot be empty, full name cannot be empty is coming here. Okay. Hmm. I'll go into click send again. Again coming here. See here first name cannot be empty, email cannot be empty, full name cannot be empty. Email also uh, is coming as a cannot be empty. But password is keeping empty, but that validation error is not coming. That because of some issue with my code, I will go to fix that. So this is how the uh, exception handling working in a spring boat. Now I'll go to see another scenario. Okay. In the database, I have an employee record. I have an employee record, the employee ID is set to. I want to view this array, view this uh, record. Okay. For that, what I have to do? I have to pass the employee ID here. The method is a post. I have already that, I think. Yeah. The get method, I am sending request. I am able to view the employee record too. Now I want to view some other record, but here we don't have any other record. If you pass any other number here, 3, 
or four, whatever it is, six, I'm passing here. But employee number six, you don't have, right? Whenever any records not available, not only employee, this is applicable for um, all the records. Okay. Now I'm showing using employee record. Now I'm passing employee number six. Employee number six is not available here. Okay. I'm sending. Before sending, I will keep one debug point. Debug point, resource not found exception. Whenever any record is not found, I want to throw a resource not found exception. I am keeping debug point here. Then the user private controller, there is a employee method, view employee method. This uh, Through this method, we can view the employee, particular employee. So there is one method I am calling find user. If you look at this user, if I look at this method, there is a logic I have written to view the employee. If the employee is not available, I am throwing resource not found exception. I am keeping debug point here also. Okay. I already explained about this method in some other video. I will going to uh, keep that video link if you want. Watch that video too. Okay. Now two places. I set in the debug point. One is here. Another one is here. Here I am sending wrong employee ID. This employee ID is not available. See here. Since the sixth employee is not available, the find user going to the find inside the find user method is going to here throwing resource not found exception. After throwing resource not found exception, it will come to here. When I resume that debug point, it will come to here. I am taking resource not found exception object. From that object, I am taking the error message. I am assigning this error message to here. This error message I am passing part of my response object. My response object. And I am saying the status is not found. See here, employee is not found. Status is not found. Okay, this is how Spring Boot exception handling is okay. I hope you understand how the spring exception handling is working now. If you have any doubts, please comment me. Definitely, I will go to answer. The next video is going to talk about how to encrypt the password while registering the new user. Okay. Until then, bye bye from Suresh. Still not subscribe this channel? Please subscribe it. Share this video to your friend circle. Click bell icon for regular updates. Thanks for watching this full video.